the word you hear that cleanses your mind when your mind has been cleansed your life is holy if you are not taught who christ is you cannot live an effective christian life there is no other honor greater than that of sonship worldliness is the trap that enslaves men to the devil relationship with god is a gift fellowship is a choice the true expression of divine love is forgiveness to others what you pursue is an expression of what you desire but to each one of us grace was given to the measure of Christ's gift therefore he says when he ascended on her he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men he gave what? Gifts. to who? Yes. now this he ascended what does it mean but that also he will first descended into the lower parts of the earth verse 10 he who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might feel all things and he himself gave some to be apostles some prophets some evangelists and some pastors and for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry for the defining of the body of Christ till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ verse 14 that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting the gifts of Christ gifts with s let's see that verse 7 but unto every one of us is giving grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ wherefore he said when he ascended on high he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men jump to verse 11 now and he gave some apostles and some prophet and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers the gifts of Christ hallelujah now this scripture gives us an insight into a reality that is important for every child of God and I believe that through this message we are going to grow in understanding let me begin by saying that the kingdom of God operates by mysteries and your understanding of these mysteries gives you access to the benefits when you are born again when you are a child of God by reason of being a child of God there are certain things that should become a part of your life a Christian must be the envy of the world not the pity of the world you must understand that every child of God is called into a life of glory and beauty because you are God's highest precious possession are you hearing me but there are many of us who are in church who are in the faith but we are not experiencing the reason why Jesus died for us so but that absence of the glory is provoked by ignorance in our hearts so it's important you go for what someone say knowledge so everyone must give himself to what to knowledge now the knowledge that is required for the maturing and the growth of a believer in the faith is captured in the scripture you cannot read chemistry and know jesus you cannot read physics and know jesus if you want to know jesus you must go to where someone say bible so the knowledge that is required for the maturity and growth of the believer is captured in the scripture any man who despises the bible has denied himself growth in the faith so there are people who have been in church for years and the more they are in church the more they get frustrated they don't understand why is their life not agreeing with what is being preached why is the life not looking like what the pastor is saying is because they have denied to give themselves to the word of god are you hearing me so you must give yourself to the scripture it is through the scripture that we gain what understanding so when the devil wants to hinder Christians from experiencing the fullness of Christ, he manipulates them.
to despise the prophet of the scripture. There are people today who want to go to church and they are angry when the pastor is preaching. Or they like when the man of God preaches things that makes their flesh happy. They don't understand that the purpose of preaching is for your spirit to mature. Why? Because they that know their God shall be strong. So strength is not a gift of the spirit. There is no be strong. Mm -mm. Your strength is a function of your knowledge. Are you getting me now? So I must give myself to knowing God. And knowing him because that becomes the only strategy for me to grow and become who I'm called to be in Christ. So look at this. I'm begging you. Give yourself to scripture. Give yourself to scripture. Bible says they that know their God shall be strong. Strong means we'll have weight. The weight of a Christian in the realm of the spirit is a function of the dimension of God's knowledge in his heart. How much you know God will determine how much you weigh in life. There are challenges that took other women out of their marriage. The challenge came to another woman. The woman stayed because she has weight. No matter how good you are, the wind will come. He said two people built their house. One built on the sand. One built on the rock. The wind came to both houses. But the house that was built on the rock, the wind had no effect. So there are people, so when you are carried away by an evil wind, it's not because the wind was strong, it's because your strength was small. So what do I need? I need to increase where? Ah, yeah, yeah. I pray for somebody here. May God give you hunger. The weight of a Christian in the realm of the spirit is the function of the knowledge of God in his heart. Listen to me. Don't think that because you are good, nothing bad will happen to you. Don't, don't have that kind of mindset. There are troubles you don't expect. Some ones you never planned for. They will happen like that. But once you know God, one thing is sure. The wind will come. When the wind pass, you will remain. But when you don't know God, right in the house of God, Satan will pluck you out. Where we read in verse 14, he said, he said, when we have matured, we shall not be carried to and fro by any kind of wind. So one of the signs of maturity in the faith in Christ is the ability to withstand the winds of adversity and the adversaries. Not You are not moved anything that, you know, when people are too emotional, it's a sign they are not spiritual. You react a lot by the way you feel. You are given to quick anger, quick grudges, quick hatred, quick pride. Listen to me. When you are that kind of person, Satan will keep making sure. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you have weight, listen, when people grow, one thing you see in them, there are things they overlook. If you cannot overlook things, it means you are still you are not mature in the spirit. When you mature, something happens, you say, leave it. No, move, don't leave more. Move, go fight. That's a child talking. Because a wise man chooses the battles he fights. Because some battles are a waste of weapon. You don't fight every battle. When you, be, when you mature. He said, when we have matured, we shall not be carried to and fro by every wind of what? Doctrine. But now here. Yeah. So, but he went behind and said, for the purpose of maturing the believers in Christ, he gave gifts unto men. So, notice therefore, some people, the assignment was to make sure that you mature. He said he gave gifts unto men. The question is, what is that gift? Can I tell you what is that gift? It's not things. It's there. He said, he gave gifts unto men. He now said, he gave some to be apostles. So who are the gifts? Men. Why am I teaching this? When you do not properly understand the purpose of the ministry of a shepherd, you cannot experience the anointing captured in him. You know, people just think that, I want to teach you today to understand who are the gifts of Christ. Christ is the gift of God. Servants of God are the gifts of Christ. We are the ones that Christ has sent 
for his purpose to be executed on earth. There are people who do not understand these things and they have missed so many great things. You must understand that there are dimensions of breakthrough you can never experience from God unless you know how to receive a sent one from heaven. There are people sent your way. In Luke chapter 7 verse 30, he said the Pharisees, they bypass God's purpose for their life, refusing to be baptized by John. So they did not understand that the baptism of John was not just about dipping men into water. It was God's system of bringing people into purpose. You have to understand what that, who are these men God sends to you. He gave gifts unto men. The United said he gave some to be who? Apostles, some to be what? Prophets, some to be what? Teachers. Show me John chapter 4 verse 10. Jesus answered and said, If you knew the gifts of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you will laugh. Ask him and he will give you living water. Notice, Jesus was speaking to a woman and he said, Give me water. And the woman said, I cannot give you water. You are a Jew. Jesus said, You don't know who I am. Notice, your response to a minister is a function of your understanding of the grace is captured in his spirit. If you knew that I am a gift, that's what he said, if you knew the gift of God. So when you find people behaving the way they behave around a servant of the Lord, it's because they don't know he's a gift of God. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So Paul begins to teach, he said, listen, Christ has given gifts. The Bible says, in what we read, Ephesians 4 verse 7, from verse 8, he said he went up but while going up, he gave gifts to men. So where is he? He has gone. Who, who did he live here? Men. He gave gifts unto men. So who are therefore oh, the gifts of Christ? There it is. The gifts of Christ are the people that Christ has given To serve as a point of contact between Christ and men. The gifts of Christ are the people that Christ has given to serve as a point of contact between Christ and men. Let us see Matthew 23 verse 37 to 39. Can we read together? One, two, three, go. Oh, Jerusalem. Jerusalem. The one who kills who? Who kills who? Who kills the prophets? And stones those who are sent to her. How often? Who is talking? Jesus. He said, how often I have wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her cheek under her wings, but you were not willing. Why? They killed their prophet. So Jesus began to describe. He said, there is a group of people. The assignment is to kill their prophet. And to stone. To stone means to condemn those sent to them. Now, let's continue. See, your house is left to you desolate. You know what desolate means? Empty. For I say to you, you shall not see me again till you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Look at that. Jesus said, I sent prophets to you. You killed them. From now, you will not see me, Jesus, unless you honor those whom I have sent. Because those whom he has sent are the points of contact between him and men. The gift of Christ, they are people who are points of contact. When you meet them, you come into transaction with Jesus himself. Let nobody deceive you. There are people by reason of the grace of God given to them, they have become a point of contact between others and Jesus for healing. That you can be sick for years and you meet them and they touch you, it goes. What you prayed for over 10 years and there was no answer. As the man lay hand, he goes. He's a point of contact. There are men that are points of contact. 
Bible says in Acts chapter 19 verse 11, he said, and God did extraordinary miracle. Can we see it through Paul? That the anger chiefs that were taken from his body, not from heaven, from his body, when they were taken to the sick, they were healed. Now, God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul so that even handkerchief or aprons were brought from his ay, 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 from his body to the sick and the diseases left them and the evil spirits went out of them. Look here. Notice. The Bible specifies that when handkerchief God is the one doing the miracle but the point of contact is the body of Paul. He says, as mighty as God is in heaven, when God sees those who are sick, God can do nothing for them unless he sends a gift called a man to them. So people are weeping. That's why the release of a prophet is a response of heaven to the cries of men from the earth. When heaven hears your cry, a prophet is sent. Paul, buddy, look at this. If you take the handkerchief from the market, it cannot heal the sick. But I bet you, I bet you, I bet you, if it comes in contact with the body of Paul, the same handkerchief you bought for 200 and, and it was used to wipe your face, when it touches the body of Paul, it goes and raises the dead. It heals those with cancer. It restores kidneys. What happened? It came in contact with a body. So this meant a what? Point of Someone say point of contact. If you read Mark chapter 16, from verse 15 to 20, he said, And Jesus said to them, Go into all the world and preach. And whoever believes and is baptized shall be saved. And these signs will accompany they that believe in my name, they shall cast out demons in my name, they shall. He said, Go to verse 20. He said, And the Lord walked with them. The Lord walking, walking with them. Read everybody. And they went out and preached everywhere. Who was walking? The Lord. the Lord walking with them and confirming the word through accompanying signs. Now, when you look at them come, you don't see the Lord. Hmm. But when they begin to walk, it said the Lord walking with them. Hey, there are points of contact. There are men and women that are points of contact. There are certain things you desire from heaven. It is easier to have an answer prayer where you understand the mystery of points of contact. That there are people by reason of an anointing, a grace, an authority received from God, they have become a point of contact for the spirit and the physical to interact. That something can be hidden for 20 years, nobody knows. And you meet a man, he said, can I talk to you? Yes. In your mother's house, they bury this thing. In five minutes, he has solved what has killed seven family members. Points of contact. So there are people that, oh my God. There are people that go through pain. You look at a woman like, like, like a man like Ananias. He said the man was sick and he was paralyzed for eight years. I think is it eight or nine years? Paralyzed. He said when Peter came. Notice, Bible specified that that man was a disciple. Meaning the man is a servant of God that he was sick. Bible specifies that man was a disciple of Christ but he was sick. So how come this man is serving God and he's sick? Because Jesus needed a point of contact. So Jesus moved Peter. He said when Peter entered that city, he said to the man, Ananias, Jesus makes you well. Bible said the same instant he stood up. Now I have a question. Why did Jesus not heal him since? Open your heart, open your eye, you will understand. God works by points of contact. And the greatest points of contact that exists on the earth realm are not material things, are the men in whom dwells the anointing of God. Oil can only do miracles when it comes in contact with us. In fact, if I don't bless oil, it is only good to fry egg. It has no use but to fry egg. I've well, heard of people who came here and will bless God. And a woman took it to her village. Somebody who was dead for two days came back. You heard that testimony? Two days she came back to life. Now that is salt you have been using every day to cook food. What difference? It, it has come and connected to a point of contact. Do you know what they call a point of contact? It's like, it's like a zone or a territory where network is accessible. You know, sometimes you go to the village and 
you are trying to make a phone call and you hear say go stand for that hill what is that hill that hill is a point of contact because on that hill you in that position anywhere you stand in that village you may not have network but at that particular spot something in that spot makes you connect and you get to what i'm teaching now you must understand that every place is a point of contact a nightclub is a point of contact with the marine kingdom those who visit nightclub and say no i know dream i don't go for this say be going you are eating a point of contact with the marine spirit and they will soon begin to operate in your life beware the way you visit bars and such places where you know that what is what is weighing there what has influence there is immorality drunkenness the things which god is not pleased with nobody can be find himself in an atmosphere influenced by iniquity and be free from being possessed by evil spirits something will take over you don't even go there blessed is the man that does not walk after the counsel of the godly he does not stand they say he does not sit he does not walk does not stand he does not sit friend true christianity will bring separation with the world some will say point of contact so Ananias is sick but yet for Jesus to bring him healing Jesus needs who? Peter because Peter is what? Peter is a point of contact so there are things you require I want you to understand that God has God oh if people in the world will open their hearts there are things you people are suffering that we can solve in five minutes but you don't understand point of contact. Not be, not be in a prayer competition. Me too, I go pray. Not be so deep in the work. Ananias is a believer. He is sick. He talks to Jesus. But when he comes to Jesus doing a walk on earth, notice when he comes to Jesus walking on earth, he needs a man. Listen to me. As a believer, you pray and talk with God. Talk with him. He talks with you. Anytime Jesus cannot walk on earth without a man a point of contact he cannot that is why when paul was walking on the road in acts chapter 9 he said jesus appeared to him and said go into and, and spoke to him i am jesus then paul said what should i do for you jesus said go into the city they will tell you jesus appears to a man the man says what should i do jesus says go to the city a man will come and tell you jesus leaves saul and goes to another man called ananias he said come go and pray for Paul. Pray for Paul to receive the Holy Spirit and tell him that this is what I have said. Why did Jesus not just tell Paul since he met him? When it comes to walking on earth, Jesus can appear to you and promise you marriage, breakthrough, children. But for him to walk it out on earth, he will need to send you to a man or send a man to you. That's why visions are not being fulfilled because you don't understand that he said at Mark 6, 16, 20 and the Lord was walking with them. The Lord needs people to walk with. So God said, Kevin, yes Lord, give me your body. Let me possess you. <laughs> Jesus appeared to me and took me to a place. Listen to this. When he, the second time he appeared to me, I was carried to a place and people there were sick, afflicted and suffering. And I look at them in the vision and I began crying. I said, Lord, help them. I said, you, help them. I said, me? Alakaya. I said, how? He said, all the need is the ageless, timeless, eternal, ever abiding word of God preached in his simplicity. I have made you into a rock out of which rivers of healing will flow. If you honor my word, I will honor your words and use it to heal them. That's what he told me. So anytime I meet the sick, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to test it. I'm a point of contact. We have had hundreds of thousands of those who have been healed by the grace of God because they met a point of contact. So a disease that kills someone could have been averted if they met a point of contact. That child that was buried, that barrier could have been averted. If they, some people, it's not that they met, some people they met, but they don't know how to connect to the point of contact. Hang a chip were taken from the body of Paul because Paul is a point of contact. I will not be under grace and see disgrace. No, Satan, no, no. You have to become violent. When God has given me a gift, a father, a prophet, 
oh it doesn't matter what the enemy does i know i am under grace i know where i found myself in the spirit so you now take your stand and say it can't happen to me i'm under grace can you bible says when he a chief touched paul's body oh boy not that paul prayed it's not no it was not prayer he said if you enter water you don't need to pray to be wet you know a prayer don't pray you will still be wet where you con contact the anointed i prophesy to somebody here i prophesy to somebody here the grace of god will be strong upon your life amen. shall demand somebody amen. so notice so this these people are those they they are sent some say they are sent so what are the gift of christ what we call, what, what? points of contact three facts number one they come in the name of the lord matthew 23 verse 39 he said you shall not see me again until you say blessed is he that comes in the name of the lord you hear me number one about the gift of christ is that they come in the name of the lord now it is important because there are people who think that men of god have come in their own name and i believe that the way you submit to a man's authority depends on your understanding of who has sent him are you getting me now number one they come in the name of the lord we saw there let's see matthew 23 39 and jesus said for i say to you you shall see me no more till you say till what notice it is you that choose when to see him how by agreeing that a man came in the name of the lord yeah blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord today we are taught to say that cause is he that came in god's name all around social media they don't understand jesus said if somebody comes in my name say he is blessed and you will see me Hola, Bacassia. do you know one time i had a story that happened somewhere I watched it on news. I think it was in Nigeria or something like that. So, a man was sent to uh, arrest some people. To arrest some people. So, he went there and was a young soldier. He went there and recklessly he shot. As he shot, he killed somebody. So, the people in that quarter, they gathered and beat the man. In the next one, a military came and beat everybody there. Plus young, plus old. They were even looking for people in their grave to beat them. Do you know why they beat those people? Because they did not respect the uniform that man had. Because he came in the name of the government. To touch him is to touch the government. It's the same law you must understand. That no minister, once a minister begins to come in his name, heaven does not know him again. They come in the name of the Lord. Not in their name. Ministry, church, is not about a man making a name for himself. It's about a man exalting the name of the Lord through the works of the Spirit through him. That's ministry. So, we do not come to minister that you may know us. The purpose of our ministration is that the name of the Lord can be made known among the territories of men. He cometh in the name of the Lord. Not in the name of his mother. Not in the name of his father. In the name of the Lord. Which means, by that reason, he has an authority in the Lord. He come in the name. What did they say to Jesus? Luke 10, 17. They say, even demons submit to us in your name. Notice. That is why. You know, some people come and say, hey, prophet, uh, come here. You're not coming to America. You're not coming to Canada. The problem is not that I should come. It's how I come. Because if I don't go to America in the name of the Lord, nothing will happen. So once a minister is now manipulated, to begin to come in the name of money trouble starts so prophet come here we don't kill some five million eh and they come tomorrow when i pay my flight they come tomorrow <laughs> do you know what has happened he has gone in the name of money the motivation must be the name of the lord do you get what i'm preaching now 
So, for every true minister of God, there are seasons God will make you pass through lack and poverty to teach you to be contented in all circumstances of life and never to be moved by the money men have. Because when God sends you to presidents and rich men, if you have not disciplined yourself in the area of greed, you will take money and cover your eye to their sin. I'm not... At least I've worked with God for a while. Sometimes we can have a program and I come to church. And we have a need in church. And I hear a voice that say, raise money. But I know it's not God. And if I raise money, people will give you very well. But I know that voice is not God. How do I know it's not God? Because I understand that I am being motivated by the need, not by his voice. So, I will not do that thing. People will give and none will be blessed. Some people don't understand. Somebody said, man of God, why are you doing prayer line and you say people should not register? Because Jesus told me clearly. He said they should never pay for you to pray for them. I don't know if you ever forget that talk. But we don't come in the name of money. Now, look at the kinds of miracles. Things that men cannot understand. People who have not worked for 15 years, rising up and work, blind eyes opening, is because when you come in the name of the Lord, you are sure. You are sure that the Lord hears you. Number two, they are full of the grace of Christ. Show me Ephesians 3, verse 2. They are full of the grace of Christ for you. If indeed you have heard of what? Of the dispensation of the grace of God, which was given to me for who? For who? <laughs> Look this now. So God says, When I am sending a gift to you, I put in that man a grace that you need to survive. God can never send you to a church where He has not released a grace in the pastor that is required for your sustenance in this world, no matter the darkness. The trouble we have today is that people choose church. They say, want to hear my ass. They don't choose church by the spirit. Ah. I don't let me that, that boy. Feed of a feed of a shout. No. Check the grace. There are people you leave, you cannot replace them. Because you will go to another man of God. He has grace. But he does not have the grace for you. Same as Peter had the grace for the Jews. Paul had the grace for the Gentiles. The grace required for you is not in every man of God. Do you get what I'm saying? <laughs> What's the meaning of the word gift? Someone giving to you. Gift is not salary. Salary is what you work for. Gift is what is given to you. So God says, I have seen your life. I know what I want you to become. I send you this prophet. In that man is the grace. You know, when I find people who are trembling, they don't know where they are. You are here. Tomorrow you are here. They say, prophet, yeah, hey, some prophet, yeah, ma, ma. I, I never go there. I want to go here. You see this? They don't know. They don't trust. You have to trust the grace. Where you, you have to trust the grace where God send you. You know? That when you are moved by desperation, you feel like you have to go to many prayer. You no go walk. That, I'm telling you that this thing here, look for a place. Settle yourself there. Trust the grace. And no matter how long it takes, it will speak for you. But you know something? We, we, we are in a hurry. That's why you are confused. So you are here. You are here. You pray, you pray, you pray. Listen to me. The things of the spirit require order. They require what? It does not just work like that. It require order to be effective. You feel like, okay, I've been here for a while. No, my girlfriend side, my girlfriend side, my job prefer, my prefer. So you go to the house, they have seven different bottles of oil from seven men of God. What is the problem? I know you define a waiting. And I'm not saying it's bad. I'm saying you are confused. And that confusion will deny your listen. I ah yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes there are there are dimensions of graces in the spirit. That we do not capture by service, but by consistent loyalty. Which means sometimes you have to pray for something every day for 10 years before you have it. Now you pray, now you change prayer. You start use oil, no, they go use water. They can use a chief. You see that confusion, that's why your life is like that. Stay somewhere. Try.
trust it, it will work. Because it is easier to build your faith into one matter than in ten. Why is the issue going here? I don't understand. So they are here now. They are here. Ah, so new prayer day. So new prayer. What's time? Now twelve to one. Okay, twelve to one. Midnight are they up? Is you listen to me? Ah 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 ah. What is the problem? Look from one minister of the gospel, whom your heart and by prayer you are connected to, and focus there. Let heaven and hell know that this is the place that you are. You have pitched your tent, and you find God meeting you there. You understand? If you do not see me as your point of contact, I shall never be it for you. That's the issue with this matter. Are you getting what I'm saying now? <laughs> so imagine the man. Okay, as I told you with the phone, you are looking for network. See you now. At the end, will you have the network? I, wait, I know you're fine. If you come here and the network start cash more, stay for here. Just the bend so, but stay for here. Bend so, you bend so. Mark about for that side. Mark you know, for there, you come out. <laughs> Number three. They have authority in the spirit. Show me 2 Corinthians 10, verse 8. For even if I should boast somewhat more about our, who gave it? Our authority which the Lord gave us for edification and not for your destruction. He says, I have an authority to build you, not to destroy you. Oh, that's why a prophet, a father should not curse. Don't curse your children, but curse your children's enemy. Because, listen, you know why? My assignment is to your life. I have to make sure that your life is preserved. So I must employ every weapon God gave me for my assignment to be effective. Jesus said, for all you gave me, I have lost none. They came after them. He said, you cannot touch my people. So they have what? Authority. This authority is to build. So if you refuse to submit yourself to them, how will you be built in the faith? The Bible says in Acts chapter 19, verse 11 to 15, he said, and some seven guys, they went about telling demons, go out in the name of Jesus, that Paul preached. And the demon said, Jesus I know, Paul I know. Notice, Jesus has authority, Paul. He said, you, who are you? It means you don't have authority. The Bible said, no, I didn't go to my village, so we did go cut that tree. I mean, no go crazy, so. no go crazy. The fact that you saw it in your dream does not mean you have authority to handle it. I'm telling you now, sometimes you can be in prayer and fasting and the Lord brings you a revelation that there is a calabash in your grandfather's cupboard. In no means see me, you go take a with your hand. Seek for those that have authority in that area and let them do it. Listen, people are entering, that's what, that's what strange diseases. There's a pastor that went and prayed for somebody and had cancer cancer. While he was 66 and he was brought somewhere and when the people began to pray, the Lord said he went to pray for someone where he was not supposed to pray for the person. They had to ask God for mercy, repent and he was healed. This is dangerous. Listen to me. We are dealing with wicked spirits that kill. You can go to the village for family prayer and come back your child fall sick and die. They will do it in a way you will never understand it was a village. You will allow two months to pass. Then the child gets sick. Say, oh, begin the hot. Hey, begin on that. You know why? You went and involved yourself into a walk where your authority is lacking. And if you say, I have my dream, I have my dream. Hey, you can see it in your dream. Look for those that have authority in that area. For example, it's as if we stay here and we hear maybe there are armed robbers somewhere. Armed, not robbers, so armed. You see, they get gone. We say, no, we'll go catch them. The fact that we saw that they are there, does not mean we have authority. What will we do? Will we go to the police who have the weapons that can fight that battle? I cannot go there empty hand like a free will offering. <laughs> no, that's not what I do. Sometimes you are praying for you are praying for your own child, and he behaves some way. Not pray again, no. Carry and can church. Say, Pastor, who's there when I pray? You know why? There is a kind of demon in that child. This, I tell now, now authority matter. Oh, authority. Sometimes, as a wife, you pray for your husband and you see a kind of vision. 
look for the one that say prophet I was praying I saw my husband wrapped in a snake he has authority now maybe you can still handle it the one thing he saw it can take you a longer time and you can have more casualty it will be easier and safer to locate a man that has authority the demon said Jesus I know Paul I know and they beat these guys if it was Paul they will not beat Paul because they recognize the authority do you think of with the gold village you go to oil? no go for day what did God tell Abraham leave your father's house Maybe say God is fear. Abraham is not mature in that time to confront the idols of his father's house. Listen to me. In a plane, the first thing they say is that if there is a problem, put your oxygen mask first. Even if you are your wife, don't put your wife on. I said, never play no. You know why? Because if you don't put your own and try to put her own, and you can't breathe, both of you will die. They say, put your, even if your baby, put your own mask first and be breathing and put their own. Are you getting what I'm trying to teach here? Yeah? Understand. There are too many of you after this service, you have to come and meet me because you have entered battles you were not authorized for in the spirit. The anointing is an authorization from heaven on a man to do certain things. So though it appears easy, don't try it. I'm telling you the truth now. There are people who come to you for prayer, direct them to church. Say, I never pray for the matter. What did Paul say? He said, do not lay hands on people hastily so that you will not partake in their sin. You need to read the Bible. That you can lay your hands on somebody and the sin he committed, you enter the same judgment. He committed a sin and because of that sin, they have epilepsy. You now pray for him that he travel and enter your family. Let me see the Bible talk. He said, lay not your hand hastily so you will not partake because this matter is a matter of authority. So God can never send a man or woman without giving the man authority in the spirit. Because we are faced with vicious demons whose greatest desire is to kill. So God needs to arm a man of God. The man needs to be armed. So when he comes and begins to minister, he so for you, nana so now let me be there for the church now. Then you blind. If you know demons that are here in the spirit. Looking for means to attack me even as I'm preaching now. Because they are already sensing. They already know that by the authority in the name of Jesus, they are about to live your life. Because they know that soon, I will start praying. When Jesus was walking, and Bartimaeus said, Jesus, have mercy on me. The demon of blindness began to tremble. He knew that if Jesus turned, blindness is over. What did the demon do? He now entered people. To discourage Bartimaeus, he said, shouted again. There are men that have authority. So while you were coming to church, something happened. And they go me again with church. That demon has manipulated you. So if you have to meet the man of God tomorrow, he makes sure you hear a news today that is not good about the man. So when you meet the man, you can't believe the authority. These men, these women, no matter, don't despise their age or their size. Paul said, Timothy, let no man despise your youth. He said, rebuke them. When God takes a child of 13 years, give him an anointing. Forget, a prophet is a prophet, no matter his age. He said, Jeremiah, do not say I am young. For before you were born, in your mother's womb, you were a prophet. So your age does not matter. What matters? He said, Jeremiah, you are still a child. Jeremiah was about 13 years when God called him. He said, but I give you authority over nations. Over, not over a town, over nations to uproot. So there are young men of God who can speak in their nation. Something happened in a different country. It's by reason of authority. Don't go and try it. Authority. Before you go for any kind of family prayer, your, 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 your grandfather was worshipping idols. You are going to remove the things. Are you okay? You think I, idol is not only a statue. There is a spirit behind those matter. Get the, a, a man or woman of God. Sir, this one to do. Let him pray. Let him give a counsel or a word. Or let him announce the matter. Or let him follow you and go there. Because where a man of God will go and speak, nothing happens. You may go there and speak and you get mad. I tell you about a man who went to his village to break altar. He, he became mad. He, he went and prayed and on the spot. He said, Holy Ghost fire. He became mad on the spot. In his own father's compound. He had to come back and meet his senior pastor. He was a branch pastor. Senior pastor now went back there and prayed. And he got hit. Don't joke with authority. You must know who has authority and submit to authority for your own good. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
So what is the work of the gifts of Christ? Number one is to teach men the things of Christ. Ephesians 4, 11 to 14. It talks about that we may be taught. Jeremiah 3, 15, 16. He says, I will give them shepherds after my heart that will do what? That will feed the sheep with what? Knowledge and? Knowledge and? Knowledge and? <laughs> so number one, the first role of the gift of Christ is to teach. When God gives you a gift as men, their first assignment is not to give you a husband or a car or a child. It's to teach you the things of Christ. So once a minister of God comes to your life, and does everything except teach you the ways of Christ. He's not fulfilling his ministry in your life. And how do you know you are being properly taught? How do you know? It is simple. When your character is transformed into the character of Christ, you are being well taught. You can't be in church for this long and you are still in fornication. Something's wrong either with the teaching or with your hearing. Those things ought not to be there again. Because when the man comes, this is a sermon. I need to teach them. After one year of teaching, this woman, she no longer sleeps with married men. She has kept her body pure, waiting for a man. Anger is gone. This young man is not scamming, not in bribery. It means they have been taught. Do you know that many of you don't want us to teach you? You want to teach us. You know what I ought to teach. So you hear some people, this is what pastors need to be saved. How do you know what, how do you know what we need to be saved? We need to be taught. So we have people who get angry and offended. We will begin to teach them the things of Christ because their desire is to hear the things that please their flesh. They are angry. So we can preach as we get to the point of righteousness. Automatic frowning in church. The Bible said that. He said when they are taught, they will grow and they will not be carried away. You need someone you can be taught. Where they can teach you the ways of Christ. Because your transformation into the image of Christ is a function of the revelation given to you by teaching. When you are being taught, the more you are taught, the more you change. The more you change, the more glory you see. Your glory in the faith depends on your transformation which depends on the teaching you hear. What are you hearing? The second work of the gift of Christ for men number one is to do what? is to teach men the things of Christ number two is to intercede for men before Christ show me Colossians 4 verse 12 Epaphras who is one of you a born servant of Christ yeah greets you always laboring fervently for you who is laboring fervently? for who? for who? For you in prayers that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. Notice, number one, I said, what is the work of the gift of Christ? To teach men. Number two, now, now remember their fact. I said, these men, they come in the name of the Lord. They come full of the grace of the Lord for you. And number three, they come in what? Authority. Now, the authority is not just to teach, it's also to intercede. He said, a Epaphras, a man stands day and night. It is there. Praying for you. So the reason why, see it again. I want to show something there. Let me show you something important there. Read. A Epaphras, who is one of you, a born servant of Christ. Notice, you see what servant of Christ do? What do they do? Intercede. Greet you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers. Yeah, that you may, you may, <laughs> give me Luke 13 verse 6 to 9. He also spoke this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. Continue. Then he said to the keeper of his vineyard, Look, for three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and found none. Cut it down. And why does he waste up use of the ground? Verse, read. But he answered and said, Sir, let it alone this year also until I dig around it and fertilize it. Stop. Look here. This tree, there was a forest of trees. And every tree that did not bear fruit was cut down. While they were cutting trees, they came to a tree that had a keeper. Ask your neighbor, who is your keeper? Although the man was the owner of the forest, he could not cut the tree without the permission of the keeper. 
Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. Do they get the revelation? Hmm. Ay, yeah. Hmm. A time comes, we understand this, that even God will not take a member of a church without the permission of the pastor. When they are fully submitted, God will say, okay, my son, this person has to die. A woman died. This is not in this church, in a church in America. It's a true story. I found the testimony. I'm going to check it on YouTube. She died and went to heaven. And while she says she was in heaven, she saw Jesus and, they, when they, and she saw choir. People were singing. And Jesus pointed at point her and said, you, you have to go back. She said, no, I want to stay. Jesus said, you have to go back. She said, why? And Jesus said, your pastor will not let me rest. And Jesus did like this. A veil opened. He just, I mean, he shifted his hand like this. And a veil opened. And she heard the voice of her pastor praying. Lord, this woman is faithful in church. She's our deaconess. She's young. She cannot die now. She, had, she was dead already for 14 hours. In the mutuary, she woke up. You know why? She has a keeper. People don't have keepers. So, the trees that were cut down is because they had no keeper. Well, listen to me. How can a man have a tree when I am money, but he cannot cut it because a keeper says, I leave it. Who is making intercession for you? To say, I leave it. You know, an intercessor is that one that stands here. You are down there. He stands here. And he looks like this. He sees accident coming. He rushes and stand between the accident and you. He said, Turn back. It's my daughter. It's a keeper. That's a father. That's a mother. The Bible says in Numbers chapter 16, he said there was a plague. I think around verse 48. He said, And people were dying, over 70,000. Moses said to Aaron, He said, Take the censer of the Lord, incense, and rum. He said, When bring it up, he said, When Moses, Aaron went, he stood between the living and the dead. The plague stopped. Even God that was killing people could not pass because a priest had stopped there. The Bible says before Aaron came, over 70,000 had died. But after he came, no one died again. I'm speaking to you here. That thing killing people in your family, I stand as your keeper. And in the name of Jesus, you are exempted. I exempt you of every evil attack. I exempt you of every evil arrow. In the name of Jesus. Who is your keeper? Sit down. Give me Job 23, verse 33 and 34. That is it. Bring it up, please. If there is a messenger for him, a mediator, one among a thousand, to show man his uprightness, verse 24, here verse 24, then he is gracious to him and says, deliver him from going down to the pit. I have found a ransom. He said, when somebody wants to be destroyed, Ezekiel 22, 30, he says, I seek for a man to stand the gap. Not I seek for an angel. Angels do not stand the gap. I don't care why you saw angel, Michael, angel, Gabriel, Elijah, and Moses. Yeah, it is Kevin standing the gap for you. Have you not read that angels appeared and told people to go to apostles? Angels don't, I'm seeking for a man, not a spirit, a man. Because if you are a man, only a man can stand the gap for you. When angels need help, angels help them. When the prince of Persia caught the angel, Michael help. Yeah, you need a man. Be wise so. So the keeper said, you can't cut this tree down. Why did Job suffer? There was no keeper. When there was a meeting in heaven and they were planning to kill Job's children, nobody said, hey, stop. The day Satan called Peter's name in heaven, Jesus said, hey, stop. Now I remember that. He said, Peter, when you were sleeping, Satan came for you, but I have prayed. Notice, Peter has not prayed, but the prayer of his keeper can sustain him from evil. Do you know the prayer of the intercessor? In Ezekiel chapter 9, he said, God sent a spirit to kill, but before, he sent a man to mark, give me chapter 9 verse 4, to mark people, and all those who were marked, the angel could not kill them. It is a man that marked them. So the Lord said to who? To him. Go through the midst of this city, through the midst of Jerusalem and put a mark on the foreheads of the men who sigh and cry over all the abominations that are done here. Go to verse 5. Then he said to the other man, go after him. Do what? Kill. You read them. Go after him through the city and kill. Do not let your eyes spare nor have any pity. Verse 6. 
utterly kill all and young men, maiden and little children and women. Read, but do not come near anyone on whom is the mark. Who mark them? A keeper. You know, some of you husbands, you are not wise. You are insulting your wife. Not know that it is your wife's prayer that you, are, you have died since. But the woman stood before God as a keeper. Some of you children, it is your mother. Wives have a, 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 a natural ministry of being keepers. Most fathers are not intercessors in their homes, but their, their, but their mothers are. So he said, A prophet is praying that you may stand. Everyone that is standing stands by the intercession of a keeper. There are certain men in the spirit that are called keepers. You know, there are, listen, there are three men that are tracked. Number one, worshippers. He said, God is seeking for those who worship me. Number two, intercessors. Ezekiel 22, 32. I seek a man to stand a gap. Number three, spokesmen. Who shall go for us? These three men, when God finds them, God knows his work can be done. Worshippers, intercessors, and spokesmen. And those who are sent by God occupy those offices. Keepers. I'm asking you, who is your keeper? Because, listen, if you don't know your keeper, when trouble comes, you don't know where to go to. Who is your keeper? There are things that happen and you scream. You say, no! I love what the woman said. A woman said, he said, I cannot die if my pastor is not dead. I like that kind of prayer. He said, Satan, before you kill me, kill my pastor. Before you kill my pastor, kill my pastor's pastor. The thing will reach for Abraham. <laughs> Who is your keeper? Life is mystery. I have seen people I've prayed for who tell me stories. How they had charms. When there is trouble, they disappear. And they will appear in the shrine of their herbalist. Because in that dimension, their witch doctor was their keeper. Who is your keeper? Ask somebody who is your keeper. So, that tree is just there sleeping. But there's a, there's a man saying, that, Lord, this girl cannot die. So, these intercessors, where, that's why every true intercessor or pastor or prophet God gives you, one thing God must give him, like God gave me, is open eye. All our dreams is about you people. So, sometimes I may not know your, your name, but I'll be sleeping. I will not see you in a dream. Something happened. I will come and pray. I must not come and tell you. It's not for show. There are, even this night, there are things I saw about some people. I've already prayed. It has passed. I must not come and say, let me be praying. Let me be praying. No, I'm not going to tell you. But you hear this morning. I want to thank God. We're coming to Kumba. We almost had an accident. I came out. I, because I don't pray. I don't pray. Who is your keeper? Jesus told Peter, I prayed for you. You know my Judas died? He rejected his keeper. Jesus did not pray for Judas. He died. Peter and Judas made the same error. But the prayer of Jesus made the difference in their outcome. Everyone makes mistake. But when you have a keeper, your mistake can be turned to a miracle. When you have no keeper, your mistake becomes your downfall. Ah, Number three. What is their work? Is to bless the people of God. Shout amen somebody. <laughs> they told me 10, will not read please. They told me 10 verse 8. He says, God has ordained this man to bless in his name. In Luke chapter 10 verse 5 to 6. He said, when you enter a house, say a blessing to this house. Romans 15 29. Paul said, when I come to you, I shall come with a full blessing of the gospel of Christ. So, the third thing that these men come to do is what? Is to what? Is to what? Is to bless. I declare you are blessed. You are blessed. Listen, this thing is not magic. Eh? If your heart is not here, it cannot work. I, I'm, I'm seeing again a word in my spirit. Who is your keeper? You know, when people are not wise, they hide things from their keeper. And they get angry. See, also I go to Papa never come and pray for me. Papa no be God. There are some things God wants you to tell him. He says, man of God, I'm going through stress. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't understand what I'm saying. How are you relating with your keeper? Some of you, if you have a prayerful mother, I beg you, in your salary, have a portion for your mother. Not as your mother, but as your intercessor. 
there are times a wife become an intercessor so see her as a wife and also an intercessor so matter call your wife and tell her never allow no i mean stay in your watch tower as a keeper over a family over a village over a community in hunger pray in 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 lack pray in abundance pray if you stay at your tower god himself rewards mother if you are praying for your children and they are ungrateful keep praying for them keep praying for them you are a keeper oh who is your keeper say god bless my keeper Shout it louder. God bless my keeper. If everybody just pray for your keeper now. Pray for your keeper. Everybody you pray for your keeper. Just ask God to set his hand on their life. Keep him on her under his grace. In Jesus' mighty name. So, what is the third work? Is to bless. So, the blessings are brought by who? By the gifts of Christ. Amen. Now, the question is this now we know that the gift of christ they come in the name of the lord they come full of grace for you and they come with authority in the spirit all right and they come to do what to teach to intercede and to bless so what can i do to experience the benefits of the gifts of christ now look at this give him matthew 23 verse 39 for i say to you you shall not see me no more Till you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Now, out of you, look here. <laughs> Jesus is saying that your experience of the gifts of Christ depends on your response to their presence. You shall not see me again till you say something. So, what you are saying may be the reason why the man of God is praying for you and nothing is working. What have you been saying? Let me show you something. Ah, Yaba Shagraya. Come, come, okay. I need somebody with. Uh, come, stand here. This is an angel, no vexo. This is a demon. Now for this story, we are not a demon in Jesus' name. This is a daughter that needs help from the Lord, and this daughter, look at her. She is having problems. Go. In her house, she said, Ah, now what do you say, Prophet Kevin? Now what do you say? They are not like. She is speaking her against me. While she's speaking against me, the spirit is hearing what she's saying. This is the demon fighting her. He's hearing what she's saying in her house. Maybe with her husband. Say, hey, we don't understand, Papa. We don't understand. We don't understand. We don't understand. We don't understand. We don't give our attention. We don't pray for me. We don't give our show me love. We don't show me love. Notice now. The angel too. No. Okay, this. Okay, we don't change room. This is the demon. Asia. This is the angel. Listen now. The angel too is hearing what she's saying. Now, I now come, watch this, and I say, can I pray for you? She said, yes. I say, whatever is fighting you, I rebuke that power. This demon starts laughing. And he says, Prophet Kevin, you have no authority over her because she speaks against you. If she does not obey me, this demon cannot obey my voice in her life. So, I come with an anointing. This demon says, Prophet, I respect you, but I will not go. Why? Because the person you are praying for has refused, has denied your authority by dishonor. Now, the angel too cannot walk because, I think it's what I'm saying. Yes. You're not a demon, you're an angel. God bless you. Wait, let me explain. Let's go to Mark chapter 6 from verse 1. You, I'll explain, but you will see there better. Then he went out to where? To his own country. And his disciples followed him. Verse 2. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things from? And what wisdom is this which is given to him that such mighty works are performed by his hand? Continue verse 3. Read. Read. Hear what they thought. Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? And are he not his sisters here? See the next verse. So they were angry with him. The, hear the next thing. What is your stop? But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his own country, among his own relatives, and in his own house. Next verse. Next verse. Now, he could do... Stop. Let me touch you. <laughs> Listen. If you read, let me see. 
if you read Mark chapter 5, eh? In fact, the most powerful chapter is Mark chapter 5. The first place Jesus met a man that has 6,000 demons. When the demons saw Jesus, they ran and bowed down and worshipped him. And they said, Jesus, we know who you are. Have you come to torment us? This is demon testifying. And Jesus spoke. 6,000 demons left him, man. Jesus left from there. A woman sick 12 years of blood. She did not talk, talk to him. She touched his garment. The sickness said, hey, I'm going. She has touched Jesus. He left from there. A man whose daughter was dead came back to life. The next chapter, the same Jesus cannot do miracle. Wait till it don't happen. Lack of honor. What happened that the Jesus of Mark chapter 5, so mighty in chapter 6, Bible specify he could not do miracle. He came prepared. Bible says in verse 1, he went to his own village. Jesus prepared to go and help his own family. He said, I'm going to pray. There will be breakthroughs in the house. There will be breakthroughs in this family. I'm going to pray for people to have jobs. He went there. And they said, Kevin, you don't come. Only in his house they can call me Kevin, not Prophet Kevin. Is this not the son of the carpenter? Maybe boy this. I'm serious now. So you now find people close to a man of God, they are the least affected by the oil. Because only in his hometown. So what is so how what is the key to receive from these people? It's honor. Jesus said, You will not see me until you say, until you honor. Blessed is he that come. So honor is the strategy to draw virtue from the gift of Christ. God can send you a gift that has the ability to heal, save, and deliver. Nothing is working for you because of what? Yeah, what they said. Is this not the competitor son? But Jesus said, What you should say is blessed is caving that come in the name of the Lord. So in Mark chapter 5, demons, demons, they say, Ah, Jesus, no, no one trouble. Then he went to his own family. A man that demons bowed down and worship. His family called him carpenter. I mean, demons say, hey, you are the son of God. Family say carpenter. How can demons call Jesus what his family cannot call him? This honor. Sit down, sit down. Are you getting me now? So what is the strategy now? What is the strategy? Show me first Thessalonians chapter 5, 12 to 13. Are you getting what I'm preaching now? And we urge you, brethren, to do what? To do what? Stop. You, do you know what the people have trouble? They don't recognize who labors over them. People who are laboring for them, they despise them to go and recognize a pastor they met on Facebook who is not laboring for them. They don't get what I'm saying at all. He, begins, he says, he starts by recognize them. Know that this is the man praying. You know, one thing which is bad when you have a breakthrough. Now, time you don't know, sir, you come out. Because if not, no, sir, you come out. When a thing go, you don't know how to bring them back. You must recognize where help comes from in your life. You know, don't be stupid as a child of God. You know, sometimes I'm living, I'm doing things, then I realize some things that happen. I say, but wait, why did it happen for me? I need to check my life. Because there are some people who enter your life, they enter with favor. If you don't know them and recognize them, Satan will take them out. You don't even know they have gone. You just realize things are getting tight because why? Somebody has left. Learn how to manage relationship and honor is a strategy. He said, recognize them. Who? Those who labor over you. I ask again, who is laboring over you? There are people who can post everyone except their own pastor. They cannot even post their own biological father on his birthday. What a shame. But they can post everybody. Even the woman, in fact, even the woman that labor for them in their womb, they need post it. They don't recognize who labor for them. A spirit of ingratitude. But if they just meet a prophet now online, they say, ah, that's my prophet. That's my papa. They'll post the picture. In that church where that man labors for you, prays for you, stands for you, counsels you, the Bible says, recognize that man. That's one that is there for you. If you must have a pastor online, you must have a contact with him. Not the one you just meet and pray and go back. No. Who is laboring for you? A man that pray for you does not mean he labor for you. Anybody can prophesy to you. Not everybody can be your keeper. He starts by saying what? Recognize them. Because when you recognize them, you make it known even to demons and angels 
that I know that this pastor, this woman is laboring for me. Once that knowledge goes in the spirit, demons that know that rank will begin to keep away from you. Let's go on with the scripture now. He says what? Recognize those who labor among you and are and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. Verse 13. Do what? Esteem them how? Ah, wow, wow, wow. What do you mean of very highly? Very high. For yeah. Why? For their work's sake. He said, because of how this prophet prays for you day and night, he said the way you honor you must be different. This is the man for you. That remember where you came from. You know, some people, when they get breakthrough, they forget how he came. They forget when the devil came after them to kill them. And the prophet laid hands and prayed. They may not be healed on the same day, but the sickness left and after a while it disappeared. They forget too quickly. He said, recognize them for their work's sake. In 1 Timothy 5, 17, he said, let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor. Double honor. There are ministers you owe them double honor. They stand for you. Listen to me, let me tell you something. Somebody cannot pay your rent, pay your fees. Send you to school. They come and say, my man was a witch. You are a witch. You are wicked. Any person that has labored for you deserves honor from you. Yes. Recognize them. When you rise in life, recognize those who labor for you to rise. People don't have money keeping to help you. If so, sometimes people help you out of their pain. Recognize what, even if you think it was small, recognize the efforts people do for your life. Recognize those who labor. So, there are three ways to honor the gift of Christ. Number one is to believe in them. Number one is to do what? The first way to communicate your honor is to what? Is to believe. John 6, 29. They said, Jesus, what shall we do to do the work of God? He said, the work of God is to believe in those whom he has sent. You hear me? Second Chronicles 20, 20. He said, believe in the Lord your God. You shall be established. Believe in his prophet. You see me? So, I don't believe in any man. I believe in God. You are not a Christian. This, you are not a Christian. You are a Buddhist. Because a Christian lives by the Bible. And the Bible says, believe in men. Believe in the men that God sent. Sometimes you have to confess, I believe in God. I believe in the prophet he has sent. Let the demons of your life know that there is somebody you, you believe in. So when that person prays, there was a man of God called William Abraham. Jesus appeared to him, gave him anointing, and told him, whenever you minister, tell the people to confess that they believe that I sent you and they'll be healed. That man was mighty in healing all kinds, especially cancer. But before he pray, he will ask you, before he prays, he will ask you, do you believe I'm a prophet? You have to say, yes, I believe you're a prophet. As you confess that, the anointing begins to work. Remember, Jesus said, you will not see me until you say. What are you saying? So you are coming to church to meet the man of God on the road. I believe as I meet the prophet, this thing is over. Your trouble is hearing you. So when you come, when I speak, you're, you have already told your trouble that that prophet is bigger than you. Any word in your heart or your mouth against the anointed, mercy. Amen. Someone say belief. The second way to honor them is to obey them. Show me Hebrews 13 verse 17. Obey those who rule over you. Watch. And be submissive. For they watch out for your soul. Are you seeing that now? He says, because they obey us. You know, there are people who don't obey what we say. They don't understand. They say, they, they say Papa is old school. Old school care. <laughs> Mommy, how will know life? If I tell you something, I say in the spirit, that thing will lead to trouble. The people want control. They don't understand that. There are men you have to obey. Don't forget, we have authority. And how you respond to authority is not belief, it's obedience. He said, even demons submit to us in your name. Where there's authority, you owe what? Submission. What is submission? Taking your power under the authority. You are still powerful, but you have allowed your power to be controlled by that authority. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? <laughs> May God bless you. Amen. Do you know I'm hearing in my heart? Keeper. That thing has stayed in my heart. Keeper. Who is your keeper? Ephesians 6 is 1. He said, Obey your parents in the law. Is that for your Bible? 
obey your parents in the Lord. What will happen? That it may be well with you. So, but now you don't obey us because we are your. We are not making you slaves. No, because for the assignment I have in your life, if you don't obey what God tells me to tell you, you cannot become it. So your obedience is not unto my profit. No, it's profitable for you, not to me. Are you getting what I'm saying? <laughs> and number three, third way to honor a gift of Christ is to give to Him. <laughs> Philippians chapter one verse seven and chapter four verse fourteen to nineteen. Paul said that the Philippian church gave to him. In verse 19, he said, My God shall supply all your needs. In Galatians 6, verse 6, he says, Shh, bring it up. Let him who is taught the word. Do what? With who? Who is teaching you? Your tithe is not for your prophet. It's unto the Lord and his house. In tithing, is for the house of God. In fact, every worker in the house of God has part in tithes. So your tithe is not what you give him. No, there must be an offering given to him as your teacher. Sir, this is my offering to you as a teacher. Do you know that there are two reasons why you give to a man of God? Number one is to sustain him. In 1 Kings 17 verse 9, God said, Elijah, there is a famine. I have sent you to a widow and she will sustain you. How can there be hunger? And God sent a prophet to a widow to sustain him. Because through her giving to him, she will enter the blessing. Number two, you give to them to help advance God's purpose on their life. Luke 8, 1 to 3. He said, and there were eight, eight women that followed Jesus and gave him money for his crusades. This is the true reason why you give to men of God. For sustainers and for advancement of the gospel. <laughs> Can I tell you something? God will never pastors are sick dying hungry because those they are sent to are selfish they don't understand that scripture says give to these men number one to sustain them first Kings 17 verse 9 listen this is my point imagine that today some prophet go for some widow tell the widow say give me your last job straight facebook a false prophet in Kumba eats widow's last arrow. <laughs> you know what it will be? If a bat. Number two, what do they give to them? Is for what? To advance the gospel. And hear me. Giving to a, a, a servant of God is the spiritual protocol of accessing the grace he has. Paul said, You are partakers of my grace because you gave to me. In fact, I preach about the God of all grace here. The only way for all grace to come to you is to give to the pastor. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 to 9. He said God will make all grace abound when you give. It is important you understand. Your giving. Ezekiel 44, 30. He said give to the priest. Let the blessing rest on your house. I beg of you. Let there be a minister of God who you are taking care of. I beg you. I'm begging you. I'm begging you from my heart. I'm begging you as the Lord begging you through me. In 1 Corinthians 9 14, he said, They that preach the gospel, the Lord has ordained they should live from the gospel. God has not ordained a pastor to live by business. It's not scriptural. Because when a pastor goes and be doing business, he can no longer give himself fully to the work of teaching, prayer, and waiting for the Lord. I'm begging you. Let your money be involved. Two things to sustain them and advance their work. To sustain them. And I want to tell you, shockingly, you will see strange blessings when you give to them. A woman had her last food. Elijah said, give to me first. Oh boy, is that no wickedness? That's no wickedness. That's spiritual law. God does not multiply jar. God multiply oil. You must bring the jar yourself. Let there be a person, a man of God, a woman of God. It is your assignment. I say, you, you will not owe rent. Sir, tell me how many is your rent. I don't have all. From now, I will give you half. Then you go, listen to me. You go and you make a covenant. Say, Father, I have chosen this, your servant, as my responsibility. Lord, as I give to him, this is my prayer. Increase me. Let me keep giving to him. You will be shocked. 
don't give for selfish reasons give because you love them you honor them father i want to take care of his rent it is fifty thousand. now i have those twenty thousand. father as i give this twenty thousand, increase me before you know after six months being consistent giving it god will increase you i'm begging you these men of god women of god they are suffering and each time they come and open up you laugh at us you laugh how can a man of god be sick but he was so they, they prefer they prefer for sick die the moon i can't clap for cry for barrier something which they could have said you could have helped them pastors are dying in pain because they know that members they are waiting for you to die for them to change church you open up to them they laugh they call you weak they don't understand that even jesus he says he said wait with me for let us be together every man of god needs a company of good men and women who say sir your life is our responsibility when they put james in prison church was playing he died when they arrested peter they say you know keep peter we need men and women that can stand for us that believe in the vision god gave us a man of god i hear you say god say you will heal the sick from now in every prayer line i will buy all the prayer line papers don't worry about that one just be praying for me let me be blessed i will not stop doing this for you look for a man of god and what i call become a covenant son look for something in his life not the church his life there are people who give to the church more than to the man and the end the man die if you paint church and pastor does not have shoe you are wrong bible says the man that builds a house has more honor than the house take care of men than buildings you cannot give money to buy speaker and your pastor is not paying rent you are wrong take care of the man because the anointing is in the man if the man was not there that house will have no value in that time because christ shows himself there because of the, what he told that man and gave that man give to them sometimes you will give to them and Satan will, will come to your heart don't be angry when you give to them if a man of god calls you for help see it as a privilege not as a burden if you don't have say i don't have but always try to respond positively because therein lies a blessing from the lord stand on your feet